Uh, I would like to thank you for the invitation to be here today. And, and first of all, I would like to have the opportunity to congratulate Montenegro on being the first country to successfully complete the so-called EBARS in the area of the rule of law. This is indeed a significant milestone for the country in its EU accession process, but also for the EU institutions, as this is the first EBAR in the history. And, and so congratulate very much for, for completing this, which is not the end of the process, as, as very well said by the President, but uh, a very important milestone in, in the work and really, really grateful for, for this work that has been done. And as you know, the EU accession process is led by the state through its institutions, but the civil society sector and the civil sector has a valuable, if not uh, absolutely critical role to play in contributing to a more participatory and inclusive process. Active civil society is a key element of any democratic system it gives a voice to citizens and creates a link between them and government institutions. If a government would be deciding only by the government, it would mean not an um, inclusive process and it would mean more a repression of the minorities. So society needs to reflect on all citizens of the country to be really democratic. Meaningful inclusion of civil societies in decision-making processes require genuine efforts from both the government and the civil society sector. Government must acknowledge that civil society organizations play an important role in connecting the administration with citizens. And, and so civil society organizations also need to be proactive and, and constructive and engage in the dialogue with the government and work towards improving good governance. Civil society organizations can help address many societal change challenges by engaging in policy debates, proposing innovative, sustainable, and inclusive solutions, and monitoring the results of the reform processes. They build the bridges between state and the communities, which is particularly important at the local level. It's also a long-term process. Development and functioning of civil society does not end with the state's accession to the EU. It's not even an EU issue. On the contrary, activists will still be needed to hold the government accountable and represent different communities, and not least after accession to the EU. We are encouraged to see that this project has achieved impressive results in reaching out to a large number of medium and smaller civil society organizations especially in the northern region, but also in the southern part of, of Montenegro. And this was exactly the purpose of this project, to reach out and, and to go beyond Podgorica, which has been very much focus of suicide in the past. And through five calls for proposals, the MBAPES project has reached around 150 civil society organizations, working on projects ranging from environmental and nature protection, to support in gender equality, youth participation, and many other important topics that matters to citizens of Montenegro. And this program has helped many um, small grassroots civil society organizations who never had the access to EU funds before to get their first grants and to improve lives of the communities that they represent. EU will continue to provide support to the civil society sector to empower you to be independent, effective, professional actors in, Mont in the Montenegrin society and to best represent the interests of the citizens, to participate in reforms and to accelerate Montenegro's accession process to the EU. This conference is now an opportunity to hear civil society's thoughts and recommendations on a series of important topics and to reflect on the achievements and challenges of the project. Thank you very much, and I'm looking really forward to the discussions here. Thanks.